Hi, I'm Darnell with Way Living Recipes, and this is my review of the Gourmia Dual Basket Digital Air Fryer. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. All right, now that it's all unboxed, as far as accessories, there's just the two little air fry racks that go inside. We'll put those inside in a moment. As far as paperwork, there's like some general warnings and such. And then there is the manual here. And then they give you a recipe book. And so, recipe book, let's see. Just kind of go into that just a little bit. Yeah, it's got like pictures of the food you can cook here. Let's see, sorry, you couldn't see that. Then you can. Basically like a picture and then a recipe. So, Lots of different recipes they have here. So let's see what page it goes until. The recipe book. The recipes go until page 19. I think it's 19. Look at this other page. No, actually it's 20. So there's basically 10 recipes because there's a picture. There's a picture on one side and the written recipe on the other. So you're basically getting 10 recipes with pictures. And then after that on the following page, oh no, there's one more, 22. So, no, it's 25. Wow, I missed some. So yeah, that's no, 23, sorry. Yeah, it's 21, 23. Sorry about that, I didn't take a close look. Yeah, this is page 23 is the final page. So there's about maybe 12 recipes that they give you or so. 11 or 12, let's see on this earlier page, yeah. So it's about 11. It's about 11 recipes and pictures. And then after that, they give you some charts and give you some general guidelines and things with charts. So pretty nice. I mean, with some cookers these days, you know, where they're trying to cut back on paperwork, they don't give you much. But here they give you a full manual. They give you several recipes. They give you a cooking chart. So they're giving you a lot of information to kind of get started with, which is cool. So now let me show you the power cord. It's a two-pronged polarized cord. The cord is very, very long, as long as my arm here, or longer. So pretty good length there on the cord. This is a 1600 watt cooker. For a two-basket air fryer, I would expect higher. So I think 1600 is coming in a little lower than I would expect. But we'll see how it performs with temperature testing and all that when we get further into this review. But Still, with 1600 watts, that's still a higher end of power, generally speaking. So you do want to have this on a separate circuit, plugged into a separate circuit from other things, because these types of cookers draw a lot of power, and if you've got other stuff on the circuit, you could blow your circuit. Nothing wrong with the cooker, it's just it draws a bit of power, and that's generally what's going to happen. So, just keep that in mind. Now the temperature ranges for this cooker are between 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit so you should be able to do everything from dehydration all the way up to air frying. The time ranges vary between 1 minute to 24 hours of course these depend on the function you're using and this cooker has a 10 quart capacity so there are two 5, pound, uh, five quart baskets not 5 pound, two 5 quart baskets and uh, they mentioned that when you set this up on your counter, make sure it's a heat resistant counter by the way, they don't say that but I'm telling you that. Um, give it four inches of clearance all around. They say give it four inches of clearance. And I do want to point out that this is an air fryer, it is not an oil fryer. You don't pour oil in the baskets to try and oil fry anything. So wrong type of cooker if that's the type of thing you're into. Now you can use like an oil mister spray bottle if you wanted to just miss something with oil. They do mention don't use the aerosol can sprays. Use like something like an oil mister or like pump mist sprayer. And if you watch some videos here on the channel I've used one plenty of times for different cooks of things. So now I'm going to go ahead and just show you around the cooker so you can just kind of get a look at how things look around it. Let's see, so you've got a view of the front, side, nothing really impressive on the side. On the top, you see um, intake, air intake valves. In the back here is your out, 
basically shooting out the back. I do feel some air vents on the bottom. I'm hoping, Lord willing, it doesn't shoot air out the bottom, but some do. We'll see. And the ones that do, I've never had one that, like, damaged the counter or anything because it is a heat-resistant counter. But some do, some don't. But that's your look around the cooker. Now I'm going to give you a close-up view of the cooker. You probably do see some reflection of light. Uh, not too much I can do about that for you, though. But basically it's a all black display that lights up once we get things turned on. And here are the five quart baskets and basically just going to take one of these racks. And the racks have little, um, I guess they're like silicone feet on them. And uh, those are supposed to stay on. Those are heat resistant. So you just drop those in there. So drop one in. Go ahead and drop the other end on this side here. Let's see if I can actually get it in. It's a little stubborn and it came out of there earlier. Doesn't want to go back in. That's interesting. Let's see. Let me see. I'm gonna have to try and work work with the feet to make sure that it gets it. Alright, so it came out easier than it's going back in. I've had to press the feet in some to get it to go down in there. I don't know why I'm having that difficulty, but I do want to show you inside a little bit. Now inside it's like plastic interior in here. And let's uh, see if I can lift it up. So now we see up in the top here, you've got your air fry fan with the heating coil basically on both sides. Similar look. I don't know if you can really see. Probably not too easy to see over on that side as well. But basically it's a pretty standard fan and heating coil up there. So that's your look inside. Alright, so now we've got the Ninja Foodie dual basket air fryer, which is a 10 quart 2.5 basket air fryer next to the Gourmia which has baskets that are also two five quart, ten quart total. So basically you see from just a general exterior look, kind of similar height. Gourmet is a little taller. Going to do some exterior measurements just to kind of get a feel for things. And so let's see, going across the top of the uh, Ninja, I've got 16 inches, going across the top of the Gourmia, I've got 15 inches that way. So an inch less going across the top there. That's interesting. Front to back, going to the handle here. I've got, uh, I'll do it over here. I've got about 12 and a half inches for the Gourmia here. Got 13 inches there on the Gourmia. Now let's, um, you know, when you see height, I mean, it's close, but Gourmet is a little taller, so Ninja is about maybe 13 and a quarter. Gourmet is about maybe 14, maybe 14 and a quarter. It's got a little hump here. So, uh, let's see. Let's check out the baskets real quick. So, here's the two baskets. I mean, just off general observation, let's see, just off general observation, the Gourmet looks just a little bigger than the Ninja. That's just off a of general eyeballing of them. It does look a little bigger. This, this one looks a little bigger than this one. But let's do a little, uh, little measuring, see what we get from measurements. So in depth, we've got five, no, four and a half, four and a half inches depth on the Ninja. On the Gourmia, we've got... It's a little more, it's a little deeper. It's like maybe four and three quarter. It's a little, little more depth I'm seeing on the Gourmia there. Now when we talk about uh, this way here, I'm seeing it's under nine inches. It's not nine, it's like eight and three quarter. About eight and three quarter. Same for 
Armia. Yeah, look, that, that's way bigger. That is uh, about nine, almost nine and a half. Not nine and a half, but almost. It's like a little more than nine and a quarter, almost nine and a half. No doubt, bigger that way. So let's go this way on the Dormia. I've got almost seven. Let's say six and three quarter that way. And this way, we've got about the same, almost six and three quarter, almost seven, well, a little over six and three quarter, almost seven. So definitely from what I'm seeing, and let's do this way, diagonal. I need to do diagonal. Ten inches diagonal. On the Gourmet diagonal. More than ten. About ten and a half on the diagonal. Let's see if I can get that right. Yeah, about ten and a half on the diagonal. So yeah, that's good. Ten and a half or so on the diagonal. So no doubt the Gourmet is it has bigger baskets than Ninja, even though both are um, supposed to be ten quarts, five and five on each side. The Gourmets are to me measuring, looking bigger. So I'm just saying bigger from the Gourmet there. So now we have the Gourmet next to the Chefman, which is a nine quart. It's two four and a half quart baskets, and this has been reviewed here fully on the channel. There's tens of reviews, well over 70 different types of cooker reviews, well over 800 videos of different cooks and things and reviews on this channel. So lots to check out here. Um, review of that ninja that I just showed to all types of stuff. Nothing in any of the videos was given to me. Nothing in any of the videos was sponsored. Everything I buy myself at store just like you and I don't take deals from any of these companies here so just let you know that for clarity now with these two we see that the Chefman is a little smaller as far as height than the Gourmet and I guess we can check from front to back from front to back the Gourmet is about 13 inches I did the Gourmet well, the Chefman's 13, the Gourmet is about 13. Side to side on the Chefman is, uh, is 14. Side to side on the Gourmet is, hold on, let's see. Yeah, is about 15. Yeah, about 15 there. So, yeah, the Gourmet is a little bigger, of course. Now, I'm just looking at a couple of baskets. I feel like the Gourmet basket is definitely bigger. I feel it is. So I am going to do some quick measures because this Chefman's two four and a half quart baskets are pretty big if you remember the initial review if you saw that. Or well, you should see that. The depth is just four inches. We know it's bigger over there on the Chefman. This way we got seven inches. What was it for the Gourmet? Let's check it again. Yeah, it's a little under seven, just a little. And then this way was like nine and a half. Whereas this way with the Chefman, it's about about nine and a half there. And let's see, depth depth is just four inches deep. Depth in the Gourmet is almost almost five inches deep, so a bit more depth. And the diagonal on the Gourmet is about ten and a half inches while the diagonal on the Chefman is just about ten. It's a little smaller, you know, it's a half quart smaller. It is a little smaller than the Gourmet. So that's basically just a comparison of these two together so you get to see this next to a couple of other two quart basket air fryers. But like I said, anything else you want to see tons on the channel check it out okay so now we're going to do an initial plug-in and so let's see if anything lights up or what happens all right so things lit up briefly it does look like a pretty faint display so good thing that I turned the big light off but this is your power button here so now things are all lit up and you can see all the goodies everything is touch 
And so basically you've got like zone one or zone two, you press which side you're going to cook on. You've got time and well you kind of switch between time and temp. So you could do like, uh, let's see, if I hit one and then I guess I have to choo choose a preset first. So I've got different presets I can cook with. So let's say I did air fry, then I could do temperature and then when I want to do time, I hit time temp and I can do my times and basically you've got other buttons here so there's like smart finish smart finish will basically have things end at the same time so let's say this side was 10 minutes this side was 20 minutes then basically like this side would start cooking this side would wait a couple minutes and then it would start cooking so everything finishes at the same time match cook basically mirrors the cook on both sides so both sides will match do the exact same thing there's a preheat button so like if you want to preheat you can have preheat on or off preheat came on by default on air fry but you can turn it off if you want also there's a turn reminder button you can turn turn reminder on or off so see that there there's the stop cancel button and basically what happens with stop cancel if you're in the middle of a cook and you hit stop cancel once it will pause if you hit stop cancel twice it will end the cook at that point and so let's see what else we have here I guess I'll talk to you some about the different uh, limits for the different functions so let's talk about this air fry function here let's see I guess I'll hit aside so the air fry function Basically, it defaults to 400 degrees, but its ranges are 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Default time is 20 minutes, but its range is between 1 minute to 60 minutes. It does have the preheat on by default, but you can toggle it off. And it has the turn reminder by default, but you can toggle that off too. Now, on the bake function, basically bake starts at 325 by default can go between 170 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Default start time is 25 minutes, you see that there. And it can go between 1 minute and 2 hours. It has preheat by default, you can toggle it off, it has turn reminder by default. You can toggle, no, sorry, turn reminder is off on bake by default. But you can toggle it on if you want to have it on, if you want to turn during baking. Now let's talk about that roast function. Roast defaults at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but ranges are 170 to 400. Default time is 25 minutes, but can go between 1 minute to 2 hours. The preheat is on by default. You could toggle it off if you wish. The turn reminder is on, and you can toggle that off if you wish. The boil function, it is 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's all you get as far as range. It's just 400 for boil. You don't get anything different. The time range defaults at 12 minutes, but it will between 1 minute to 60 minutes. And the preheat is on by default. You can toggle it off. The turn reminder is on. I guess if you want to turn things over while brewing, but the turn reminder is on by default. You can toggle it off. The dehydrate function, it uh, Basically the faults to 135, 135 degrees Fahrenheit, but you can do between 90 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can start out at a default of 8 hours if you want, or you can change it. You can do between 30 minutes to 24 hours. Preheat is off, not applicable to preheat on dehydrate. The turn reminder is off, but you could toggle turn reminder on if you wanted to turn during a dehydrate. Next function is the reheat. Reheat function defaults to starting at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, can do between 170 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The default time is 15 minutes, but you can do between 1 minute to 60 minutes. And the preheat is off by default, but you could turn preheat on if you wanted to preheat before you reheat. Now the turn reminder is off, but you could turn turn reminder on if you wanted to turn things while reheating. Last function is keep warm. Keep warm defaults to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, but you can do between 150 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The time defaults to 30 minutes, but you can do between 1 minute to 8 hours on keep warm. 
and there is no preheat on keep warm and there is no means to toggle a preheat for keep warm. Also turn reminder is off for keep warm and there is no means to toggle the turn reminder on keep warm. So lots of functions, lots of features available to you. Now if you want to toggle between displaying Fahrenheit and Celsius, you hold the time and temp to toggle between changing settings between both zones. So let's see if I hold time temp and we'll see if it'll, there it goes, it switched to Celsius and we hold it again it goes back to Fahrenheit. So that's how you toggle your uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit there. Now if we want to mute, and I think I am going to mute things, to mute the beeping you're supposed to be able to press and hold stop cancel and you can hold it again to turn the sound back on but I'm going to go ahead and hold it and see if I can all right, so now no more beeping, right? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see, yeah, no more beeping. Good. No more beeping. Cool. Now it will still beep for the prompts, so like turn reminder, end of a cook, end of preheat, I guess. You know, stuff like that is still gonna beep for you. So now it's time to do a temperature test. So Basically what I want to talk about also while I'm doing a temperature test, it's a good way to start doing a burn off for me. But basically any cooker you buy, whether it's countertop or conventional type of cooker, doesn't matter. You're going to have to do a burn off. They're going to have a smell. They're made in factories. That's the way it is. If you, want, if you don't want to deal with smells when you first buy a new cooker of any type, then you have to buy one used. But they mentioned that you're going to have smell for the first few cooks. So the burn off process and I've got a whole video just basically talking about that and how to mitigate that a little but it's basically a matter of just cleaning it and then letting it run for a while that's it but I'm gonna put this temperature gauge in set it right there to try and measure temperature so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave it on that air fry and I'm gonna set I guess I'll leave it at 20 minutes the temperature yeah we'll leave that at uh, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, we got the preheat. I'm going to take that turn reminder off. I don't need to be bothered with that. We're going to go ahead and start and we'll just see what happens here. I guess it's preheating. I guess so. So, basket's in. No sound. That's interesting. Let's see. Well, nothing's hotter yet. Okay, I think the basket wasn't in all the way. That's the problem. I didn't have the basket fully clicked in. So make sure you get the basket fully in. And so we'll let it go ahead and preheat for a while. Alright, it's time to add food according to it. So I'm just going to open up real quick to look. You're going to have to take my word for it. It is now 400. It is about 350. I mean, it's, it's a solid 350. I'm going to get it out and show it to you. It's coming down a little bit, but it's 350. It is not... Let's see if I can see it better. Whoops. I'm going to drop the darn thing. Alright. Try to get that thing down. There we go. It's 350. It's still holding solid at 350. It's not 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So the preheat does not reach our target temperature. But, let's see, but then let's make sure it didn't, didn't fall down. But I'm going to let this run for like maybe 10 minutes or so and check it in about 10 minutes and we'll see if it's reached 400 then. But if it is not then, that, that'll be interesting and that would be a telling thing since it's just a 1600 degree cooker. I mean 1600 watt cooker. But we'll let this run for a while and I'll bring you on back. Alright, it's been going for 10 minutes so I'm going to just pop the basket. That does the auto pause as well as hitting that cancel button. But we're at 400. So I got to 400. Reach target temp once it's cooking, even though it does it during the preheat. Canceling that out. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this temperature gauge, put it on this side, 
I want to feel this side real quick. This side feel the side wall feels a little warm. It's not hot, but it's warm. And going inside, yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it's a little hot on the side wall here. On this side, it's cool, but you know, the side that didn't get used at all is getting a little warm from the use of the side that's being used. You know, so that's just something to keep in mind if you got things in both baskets. This stuff, the stuff over here will get a little, just a little warm from the heat over on this side. It's not a very, you know, perfectly, not a perfect heat partition there to keep things totally cool. On the other side, it does do a little cool down after you stop the cook, as you notice. Now what I want to do, I'm going to do a match cook. I'm going to hit air fry and time. I'm going to up it to 30 because I'm going to let it run for 20 minutes before I uh, stop anything. And I'm going to take the, well I'll let it just run through the preheat. So I'll let it run up to it. I'll let it do its preheat. And, uh, well no, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to let it run for 20 minutes straight. So it'll get 20 minutes on this side and we'll see. Well I'll let it run for 25. So we'll give it 25 so that it's got another 5 minutes to heat up with no preheat. And that should definitely get things to the 400 if it's getting the 400 on this side. I just want to just run straight through it without having to stop to open and close when it uh, says the preheat's done. So we'll just let it run for 25 minutes and see how things look. Stop that preheat. So hit start. So we'll let it run for 25 and then bring you back and we'll see how things are looking on the temperature then. Alright, so what I was trying to get going here was the um, the decibel reader to sound measure here. I was trying to get that going but I wasn't able to get it going with my screen recorder so I'm just going to have to screen record from the camera. But basically you see when I talk I get up to the 50-60 range when I'm talking but with both baskets going I'm just going to let you see how many decibels it gets up to on the uh, sound reader. We see we're in the upper 40s, so it gets as loud as the upper 40s. This is a little louder than when I did the chef win, which stayed in the 30s. And so it's a little louder, but it's not super loud. I mean, it's a basket air fryer, so you know, you gotta give it a break. But still, it's in the upper 40s as far as sound is concerned there. And so that's your sound decibel check. Alright, it's been going for 15 minutes strong. No, sorry, 25 minutes strong. I'm knocking 10 minutes off. 25 minutes strong. So let's see what's happening here. Yeah, it's 400. 400. So an extended run and it stays at temp. So that's good. 1600 watts and it's able to do it. That's alright. So let's uh, do some feeling around here on the display. Maybe a little warm, but it's fine. Up top, it's warm. Intake there. Down here by the door, ooh, a little hot. A little hot. On this side down here, warm. Up higher, warm. On this side, warm. Warm can keep your hand there, but it's warm. Out back, um, where you know where it's shooting out the back, it's a little hot not not really hot I can, I can put my hand there and hold it there and I can burn myself seems hottest right here by the right on the door a little bit to me um let's feel down under I'm not feeling any heat coming out the bottom it's feeling cool so there's no heat coming out the bottom that is very good I like that so that's how it feels around the cooker there now I want to try making some changes on the fly so let's say I, um, yeah, I can up the temp, I mean time, I can change the temp on the fly, let's see, yeah, so you can make changes on the fly easy, and uh, let's go ahead and stop, and after I stop, let's say if I hit, let's say I hit air fry again, well, let's see, if I hit zone one, air fry. Let's see, it got to 400, but it doesn't remember, like there's no memory, is what I was checking. So it doesn't remember the last cook. 
and it just always defaults back to those defaults I told you about earlier. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn off the preheat return reminder. And I just want it to run for a moment and just test the pause button. So yeah, so I got a pause when I just hit it once. And I hit it again, and it picks right up where it left off. So that's cool. So the pause button works. And we already know that pulling a basket out will also pause things. So pretty good deal. So I'll just stop that there. Okay, so let's see how this does toasting some bread. I've got a slice of my almond flour whole wheat bread here. It's out of the refrigerator, so it's cold. It is much more resilient than your store-bought bread, so it does take more time, but it'll give me a gauge of how it does doing the toast. So, pop it on in there, and since it is more resilient, I'm going to use Air Fry 400 in five minutes, I'm sure any store-bought bread would need less time than that. But we're going to not do preheat, not do turn, reminder, hit start. Let that go ahead and run, I'll bring you back. Alright, we reached the end of five minutes. And we're going to go and get in here and see what we have. So here's the bread. You see it cooked more on the bottom than other parts. The back, I didn't turn or anything, you see. So basically the back, you know, I didn't expect it to cook the back. But the front we see, it's not a totally even front cook. Just down on the bottom got more searing. Some on the top. The middle didn't get as much. So that's how things look during toast. Okay, so now I've got some almond flour chocolate chip cookie dough here, and so I'll flash the recipe on the screen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start basically getting them laid out on this plate, 12 cookies. And what I'm going to do with the cooker, I've taken the baskets out, I mean not the baskets, I've taken the air fry racks out of them. And basically those racks will be used as covers, kind of just kind of hovering over the top of the cookies to help shield them from getting overcooked too much on the top. So I already have them laid out on the plate so it'll be easier to get uh, six on each side real quick after preheat. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I'm going to hit bake and I'm going to match cook. And I'm going to up the temperature to 350. And let's see. Yeah, so 350. Time, bring it down to like 15. Lord willing that'll work out. So 15 on each side on bake. We got the preheat, no turn reminder, hit the start. I'll let things preheat while I get my cookies laid out. Alright, time to add food. What I've got is some extra light olive oil I'm going to spray on the uh, bottom here. Don't confuse extra light olive oil with regular olive oil or it's not extra virgin olive oil either. Extra light is a totally different form of olive oil not to be confused with regular olive oil not to be confused with extra virgin olive oil has a high smoke point and doesn't taste flavor. It's very different. So getting the cookies just kind of trying to toss them in as quick as I can. Six on each side. I'm going to leave both open so that they'll cook evenly on both sides until I'm done tossing cookies in. A few more. One more. Alright, I'm going to close these things up. Let things cook for a while and then I'll bring you back. Oh, I forgot to put the uh, racks on to cover things, so we try and get the racks in. We try and cover things a little bit. That's fine there. Try to get this one in also. Let's see if I can. Sorry for 
bumping the camera there. Whoa, that one dropped in. Oh well. One of them's got it like right on top, but we'll just go with it. We'll see what happens. I'll bring you back. Alright, so 15 minutes. We'll see what's going on now. And this one, you see I had the rack setting pretty high, which is really how I wanted it. Get that one out. So, see the cookies in there? They look pretty nice. Setting this one aside. This one is going to be a little harder for me to get the right now. Alright, I think we got it. Now with this one, let me show you these cookies. You see these, they got more cook because the rack was right on top of them. I mean it was literally setting on top of the cookies. Like the cookies were, if not for the cookies it would have gone down further. That's how it was right on them. But the ones that had the rack a bit higher, you see, they're not as overcooked on the top. So you see these, rack right on them, rack higher up. So if you can, try and configure the rack so that it's, you know, setting a little higher, not right on your cookies, and things should go better. I'm going to go ahead and start getting these out. get them out of there. The oil helps make things, you know, not nothing sticks to the bottom really. So just gonna get them all out. Alright, so these are the finished cookies. So it turned out pretty decent, especially the ones where the rack was a little higher. So they're still pretty warm. And thank God for this and have a taste of this. Alright, still pretty hot. It turned out good. Basically, you can do baking. It turned out nice, so all good. Alright, so now I'm going to try and air fry a frozen salmon fillet there. So, turning the cooker on. I'm going to go air fry over here on zone 1. I'm going to do 375 for the temperature. I'm not going to turn it. Let's turn off the turn reminder. And for time, I'm going to take it up to 30. Maybe it'll need 30, maybe it'll need less. I'll probably check it after 20. But hit and start. I'm going to let things preheat and then I'll get it on in. Alright, time to add food. I'm just going to put it on the air fryer rack in there. I'm going to go ahead and cook and I'll bring you back. Alright, I've let things go for 10 minutes, or well, 20 minutes, sorry. 20 minutes, I'm going to check temp just to see where we're at. And we are already 144, 145 in just 20 minutes. So that's pretty good. That is very good. Other cookers could take 30 minutes or more sometimes. And 20 is a very good, very good fast cook the way it should be for a basket air fryer. So here's the finished fish. I'm just going to let it rest for a moment to reabsorb juices. Okay, so things have had time to reabsorb juices, cool down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut a little corner off here. Cut through that skin. And so you can see the uh, cook meat there. Got to go ahead and thank God for that and do a taste. Okay, it tastes good. It's a little dry. I mean it's not totally dried out but a little dry there. Then, you know, coming from frozen in a basket air fryer. I'm not too surprised, but all the same, it cooked, tastes good, 
you know, it's a meal. So it is able to do the air fry thing, and it's able to do it quick. So you, with this cooker, you have to uh, basically plan your cooks for this to cook things up quickly, because that's how it does, and that's a good thing for 1600 watts. Two baskets cooking things up quick, that's real good. But, real quick, I want to talk about cleaning. Basically, the baskets are top rack dishwasher safe. So, basically when you clean this, you can use like a warm soapy rag and basically, you know, wipe the everything around, interior, exterior, you can wipe it all off. Then use a wet one to get it all cleaned off. I usually don't use the dishwasher at all for any of these parts. They last longer doing them by hand. So I do it all by hand. But uh, it's up to you. And so don't use anything abrasive like any scouring pads or anything like that. Just warm soft cloths to wipe things off. It's got that non-stick interior. That's not so good for your health for you who didn't know. But it does uh, help with easy cleaning. If you haven't seen it, I always tell you check out the documentary The Devil We Know. All these non-stick things, um, they have their drawbacks, I'll say that. So let's talk about the warranty. The cooker comes with a one year limited warranty, so pretty standard there. And so basically, as I said, nothing in the video is sponsored, nothing given to me, but in the video description there are lots of ways to help the channel, such as my cookbook, merch, membership, donations. Link to the Amazon shop where you pay the same price but help the channel. Also, you can always check out my blog, superwaveovenrecipes.com. Again, that's superwaveovenrecipes.com. And so, with all of that said, if you did like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend, leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification icon and good eating.